Hey there, welcome back to Source Stud Nerd. I'm Philip Molina, and yesterday I was so pumped. If you know me, you know I'm obsessed with future technology. And yesterday was the day that Uber put real self-driving cars on the road in San Francisco. I was so excited, I actually asked our management here to arrange a trip for the Source Stud Nerd team to go to San Francisco just to try them out. Of course, I also tried to pitch it as nerds try to crash a self-driving car, but nonetheless, you can tell I was thrilled. Well, trips canceled because <laughs> before the end of the first day of self-driving cars in San Francisco, San Fran, California regulators were like, hell no, get those cars off the road. Apparently, according to the state of California, Uber did not acquire the necessary state permits for autonomous driving. Permits ruin everything. Okay, so here's the thing. This probably is Uber's fault because it's not like California doesn't give these permits out. Google, Tesla, and General Motors all do have these permits. However, Uber claims they don't need no permit because of a loophole in the way that their technology works. Here's the official wording of the rule. The motor vehicle department requires special permits for autonomous vehicles and defines autonomous vehicles as those that drive, quote, without the active physical control or monitoring of a natural person. That monitoring of a natural person is the part that Uber got all hung up on. First of all, by the way, I love that they had to clarify that the person has to be natural, meaning you can't sneak in like a robot or a Steven Subtick in there. It's gotta be a good old fashioned sack of meat and bones human. And Uber's self-driving cars, they actually do require a meat and bone sack to be in the car at the wheel in the self-driving cars. Which, first of all, lame. The whole point of self-driving Ubers is so you can pass out in the back sleep farting until your butt's content. But you know, without the guilt of having stank ass hot boxed your poor driver. Oh, and also, to avoid that stupid small talk. Like, I don't know why I have to ask, so, uh, how do you like driving for Uber? But if the driver's in there, I will 100% of the time ask them that. But anyway, Uber refuses to file for this permit because they have that person in the driver's seat and California is not having that argument. I'm all for extreme progress at an impossible pace. Like, you all already know I wanna be frozen when I die, even though they have yet to figure out how to bring those people back. However, California does have a point that maybe Uber isn't totally ready for unleashing these cars on the road yet, considering that on the very first day of this existing in San Francisco, a taxi cab caught a self-driving Uber flying through a red light, like not even slowing down at all. There was even a guy in the crosswalk when that happened. Had the timing been like a little worse, that guy might've got smushed. Now Uber is like, hey, remember we require there to be a driver in the seat. So actually this wasn't the car's fault. It was the driver's and things actually get really murky here. So in an official statement, Uber claimed the car wasn't even one of the self-driving ones, even though there's like a really obvious camera array on its roof. But uh, I'm a sucker for technology. So let's say they are right and this was just a normal uber driver blasting through a red light in that case i actually agree that this video is a good example of why we do need self-driving cars all over the place as soon as possible because humans mess up like crazy can you imagine in the future when we're telling our kids we used to drive our own cars these 2,000 pound machines down the street and they're like why would you ever do that we're like, oh i don't know it was fun kind of and like we had to get permits and they're like well did, at least nobody died right no it's like the most common way to die so and Anyway, if you're thinking that maybe we aren't totally ready for self-driving cars because if they mess up like crazy, that might not be good. I actually did some research on this. According to a study by the Eno Center for Transportation, if just 10% of the cars on the road were autonomous, the number of accidents in the US per year could be reduced by 211,000 and over 1,100 lives would be saved each year. If you value money over people, we'd also save $22.7 billion. That's if just 10% of the cars on the road were not being controlled by sleepy or drunk or distracted humans, but just decent computer drivers. If you take that number up to 90% of the cars on the road, we could reduce accidents by 4.2 million each year. Nearly 22,000 lives could be saved each year and $450 billion, like half a trillion. So yeah, I may be addicted to technological progress, but considering that airbags and seatbelts and all kinds of safety features were mandated in cars just because they could slightly improve safety by maybe a few percentage points across the country, then these game-changing, like world-changing stats tell me that we just need to go ahead and make this happen already. Now, again, to Callie's credit, I don't think they don't want it to. I think they just want to make sure that all their I's are dotted and T's are crossed because when the accidents happen, which they still will to some extent, they just want to have their shit in order. No word yet on if Uber is going to be able to bring self-driving cars back to San Fran anytime soon or if this is going to end up being some stupid extended debate. But in the meantime, you can actually just go to Pittsburgh where they already have this. Uber doesn't have the permits there either, but Pittsburgh don't give a fuck. 
<laughs> the downside of all this is you would still have to visit Pittsburgh. So trade off. All right, what do you guys think? Are you ready for the self-driving cars? Or now that it's almost a real thing, are you like, hey, on second thought, this is terrifying. Hit me up on Twitter if you want to chat with me about it at FEMO. Also, stay tuned for tomorrow. We're going to do a 9 a.m. live stream review of Rogue One. And we might have a special guest or two. Trust me, you're going to want to tune in. Make sure to subscribe to keep up with everything. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a great night. Bye. Two's coming on. Okay. Wait. Outfit number two? Whoa, Will. Jessica, look over there for a couple seconds. Oh, is to have these cats buried next to her other fucking dead pets. Now, how much are the cats' kids?